recent years, the global conversation has turned to emerging technologies, most particularly artificial intelligence, and their potential for drastically transforming the socio-economic fortunes of communities around the world. However, the very nature of these technologies' newness requires that countries, especially in the global south, carefully design policies to ensure their populations benefit fully from their adoption while being protected from the risks they pose. Rwanda has enthusiastically embraced artificial intelligence and taken major steps towards its integration into the country's wider ecosystem. A major milestone towards this goal was the launch in 2022 of the Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution in partnership with the World Economic Forum. Rwanda has put a, a specific focus on AI um, over the last few years for two main reasons. One, uh, Rwanda aspires to be an innovation hub for the continent, proof of concept hub for the continent. Um, so it's important for Rwanda to be at the forefront of, uh, of the AI revolution, let's say. But more importantly, Rwanda recognizes that AI is very important in achieving Rwanda's aspirations to be a middle income country by 2050. The center was established in 2020 and the majority of our work has been focused on uh, establishing policy foundations for AI. And that has been largely around creating a national AI policy and strategy, which is essentially a set of recommendations that should be taken at a national level in order to create a strong AI ecosystem. And that covers everything from education, data, computing infrastructure, adoption in the public and private sector, as well as ethical deployment of AI. Beyond policy formulation, concrete steps are also being taken to further operationalize artificial intelligence. A few years ago, we did a landscape analysis of identifying where we think uh, opportunities or value from AI can come from. So now we're going to try to figure out ways we can develop those applications, those use cases and bring them to market. And so um, that's going to involve helping create data sets and making them available to the research innovation community, investing in both soft and hard uh, infrastructure. It's going to involve a, lo a lot of advisory work. So we're going to be designing some fellowship programs, AI fellowship programs, where we essentially help match young talent to organizations that might be looking for that talent. We're going to look for uh, opportunities around PhD fellowship programs, uh, looking for talent exchange between Rwanda and other countries and universities from across the world. Continuing its drive to lead the global conversation on artificial intelligence, Rwanda will host the inaugural Global AI Summit for Africa in April 2025. We're going to be launching our Africa AI Summit, which again is going to be a platform through which uh, technology leaders, government leaders, policy leaders from across Africa um, come to Kigali to discuss some of the biggest topics uh, around AI that are contextual to their different economies, contextual to the continent as a whole. Rwanda's positioning as a proof-of-concept destination for new technologies has also yielded impressive results for its citizens, while also providing a global use case for their commercialization. This is the story of Zipline. Zipline started in Rwanda in 2016, so we've been part of the seven-year transformation of Rwanda in the technology space. Zipline is involved in healthcare logistics deliveries using drones. Uh, the first ever center of Zipline started in Rwanda, so today our deliveries involve uh, delivering uh, medical products, blood, and we support farmers in Rwanda with animal vaccination, and uh, we support vets delivering artificial insemination for swine. Uh, Zipline Rwanda has over 500 deliveries every day in the four corners of Rwanda, served by our center in Mohanga and in Kayonza district. Traditionally, what would happen would be uh, medical product will be sourced by Rwanda Medical Supply for the country. Uh, they will be delivered by trucks to regional district pharmacies. They will hire quite a number of vehicles to deliver the medication from regional pharmacies to the district hospitals, from the district hospital to the health centers. And health post will also come all the way with motorbikes to the health center to collect medications. Today, right from the center of Rwanda in Mohanga, we fly drones in a few minutes to any corner of Rwanda. We go to Rusizi in 40 minutes by drone and deliver emergency product, restocking. But also the most important impact in the health sector is that today our 2023 report indicates that we have reduced mortality of 
mothers by 51%. The partnership between Zipline and Rwanda has allowed the company to scale its operations globally. So today, Zipline has expanded uh, out of Rwanda in five countries in Africa, two countries in Europe, and the United States, and uh, in Japan as well. So we are so proud of this partnership with the government of Rwanda that has allowed the birth of Zipline. In 2020, the country also established the Rwanda Space Agency, whose mission is to develop Rwanda's space sector towards social economic development. In its four years of operations, the RSA has recorded a number of significant milestones. The main, uh, main uh, motive behind the establishment of uh, Rwanda Space Agency was how do we ensure that we use space technology uh, to enable other sectors to grow. Um, for example, uh, using satellite images, now we are able to perform better in agriculture, we are able to plan uh, properly in terms of infrastructure and urbanization, we are able to manage a disaster and really reduce the impact of climate change. Uh, in terms of achievements, uh, quite a lot. In partnership with uh, the University of Tokyo, we are able to have um, with the, uh, engineers, like four engineers to work on satellite, satellite uh, really by Rwandan engineers, of course supported by Japanese, expert and we were able to launch a satellite uh, that was quite a uh, big achievement. The second biggest achievement was the establishment of uh, uh, a teleport uh, in the eastern part of Rwanda, Mulwe, that is now completed and uh, established a ground uh, antenna and uh, that is going to change really uh, the whole infrastructure of satellite on the ground in this sub-Saharan region. The most critical one uh, was the establishment of the geos geospatial hub that really aims at bringing together or creating a hub where we do gather all different um, satellite data and other ge geospatial data and combine those and add a bit of machine learning and artificial intelligence to be able to extract key data that we really, uh, support the uh, decision making. Rwanda's adoption of emerging technologies has had a cross-cutting impact not only on the health and welfare of citizens but on the country's economy. But what has it meant in the larger scope of international cooperation? When you see different emerging technologies on, on what we've been able to achieve, um, you look at drones and um, we are currently being a benchmark, a global benchmark in, in terms of regulation but also on how to commercialize and manage a drone ecosystem. Um, in space, um, I, I think the, in, the investments we've made um, today um, are supporting the global conversation on, uh, on space rights for Africa. Um, and that is going to be very impactful in how, um, in how we can be, able, Africa as a continent, especially Rwanda, we, we can reap benefits from, from space in general. If you've also lately seen around AI, it's a now a very global conversation. Um, we, we were among the first country to put a policy in place, and that has put us in a position where we are currently contributing in the global conversation around AI governance, um, but also uh, defining what does AI look like uh, for small countries like us, but also even in general in Africa, what does that look like? The last point, um, if you see students that are coming out, graduates from CMU, AIMS and others, they are currently leading technology advancement across the continent. And we think this would uh, continue helping us identify how can we better the life of our Rwandan citizen on a day-to-day -day basis. As we embark on the next five years of the second national strategy for transformation, the government remains committed to ensuring that ICT continues to be an enabler for transformative change and inclusive development for all Rwandans, with every citizen as an active stakeholder in this journey.